Despite being surrounded by all these flowers and all this beauty, there's just some hard work to grind out this season on the farm because this is the time of year that we get our main crops in. Crops like potatoes and onions and beets and carrots and cabbages, crops that will carry us through to the next harvest all through the winter. There's a lot of work to do today. The first crop that we're gonna get in today is our purple storage onions. Purple onions, especially storage varieties, can last from one year to the next. You might have a little bolting down in your root cellar, but you can just cut the tops off and use them as scallions. So this is gonna be a good crop to get in today. We might have a little bit of rain. It's a cool day, it's been really warm. I think the onions will like it. So, I mean, all that's left to do now is work. <laughs> get on your knees and plant some onions. These were started about two months ago in the greenhouse and they're really strong and healthy now so they should transplant well. If you're just getting started on growing vegetables for food, these main staple crops are a really good place to start. While it's fun to enjoy some broccoli or Brussels sprouts, those aren't necessarily the crops that are going to feed you all winter long. So sometimes it can be better to just focus on doing a few crops really well and enjoying the benefit of them for as long as you can. One of the best ways to grow these big crops of your storage crops are in what I call market rows. And this is just 30 inches wide, which is the width of this broad fork that I'm using here. This is a really, really handy tool to get a good harvest from these crops. So all I'm doing is working down the row and lifting the soil. So I guess you could consider this tilling, but not really. All the weed seeds pretty much stay on the surface, but it works to aerate the soil. It's a lot of bioactivity going on underneath there. Worms love it. So before any crop gets planted, cabbages, potatoes, onions, carrots, beets, whatever it may be, we broad fork. Then we rake, clean up any weeds, which there's quite a few on this bed from last year. All that prepping before we can plant. Planting onions is just one of those painstaking tasks. There's no shortcuts. There's no easy way to do it. There's just getting on your hands and knees, clearing your area. And then we use a little dibbler to make holes for each of the onions. So in this 30 inch wide bed that I have here, I'm able to fit five rows of onions. And I just use my cedar to sort of help me mark the lines, which are notoriously crooked in my garden but it helps to set the pattern so that I can use the dibbler to create the holes to put the transplants right down into. When you're putting in onions, remember that they like to be planted a little bit deeper than you might imagine. If you plant them too shallow, they'll dry out too easily and then you could lose your entire crop. I've been there, I've done that, and that's why the dibbler comes in handy because it helps you to dig those holes a little bit deeper. It's also helpful to have a hand or two extra. Is it? To help you plant. <laughs> Some hands are more helpful than others. I appreciate all of them. Another major, major crop to get in this time of year is potatoes. We're growing four different types of storage potatoes this year, and we did something a little bit different. In the past, we've grown potatoes in our market rows, but what happens is as you're harvesting the potatoes and mounding the potatoes with soil, it really destroys the structure of the rows. So instead, we took a gigantic compost pile full of cow manure and sheep manure that we have been building for about two years that's had time to heat up and to process all its weed seeds. This is an old pile. 
and we flattened it all out with the tractor and by we I mean Stuart and this is going to be our potato patch this year this is the biggest patch of potatoes we've ever grown by far so the hope with this patch is to get a sizable yield um, something that can bring us through um, into the winter months and even into the early spring um, so we're really hoping to, to cash in this fall on these potatoes to round out this job of potato planting um, after just helping them make contact with the soil um, and putting them in rows we just got some old straw and some old hay and covered them over and we'll have to keep covering them throughout the season uh, to make sure that the potatoes don't get exposed to the sun or else they come, become noxious. This is a very typical spring breakfast because even though we have beautiful herbs starting to come out of the garden and a little bit of spinach and a little bit of lettuces, the bulk of our food is still coming from what we stored last year. I would be lying if I said we weren't a little tired of cabbage at this point, but it does make it all the sweeter when you finally get those first tomatoes and the peppers and the bounty of summer. But still, cabbage slow cooked down in bacon fat with a nice poached egg on top, maybe some of the spring herbs from the garden. That is a good breakfast. It's nothing to balk at. So when we're planting our gardens every spring, we're thinking about what's going to feed us for the longest period of time. And as much as I love my eggplants, for example, those aren't things that are gonna really carry over as much as some of our staple crops. Things like root vegetables, parsnips, beets, carrots, stuff that will store really well long-term. Or storage cabbages, for example, that we can keep in our cold room downstairs for months on end. Also crops like onions, purple onions, yellow onions, shallots, garlic, all of these are foods that will really carry over for months of the year. On top of that, of course, a lot of preserves. So jams and chutneys and jellies is a wonderful way to preserve fruits that would otherwise not really last that long. And then of course, fermentation, so things like sauerkraut and pickled cauliflower and asparagus. We just ferment these in salted water, leave them out for a few days, and then pack them up into cold storage where they can stay for years, really. I think we're actually still eating on some sauerkraut from 2018. Just develop, don't make that face, it's good. <laughs> Stuart's making a face at me. It's good, it holds over. The salt preserves it, it's delicious. But it's a really good way to preserve those crops for, for months on end. And as you're gardening, it's a really good thing to start to think about because bounty isn't just for the summer, it's also for the fall and the winter and the spring, but it's the work that you do now that allows you to reap that harvest. On top of that, we also have some preserved meats in our cold storage. So we raise ducks and we make the legs and thighs into duck confit. We pack that in lard and in duck fat and store that in our cold room as well. You can just go and pull one out whenever you'd like. We make riette from the trimmings when we butcher pigs um, and lardo and you know preserve bacons and prosciuttos and that's all methods of preservation that's been used for generations that we still use now to preserve what we harvest in one month to something that we can eat in another. It takes a lot of work and a lot of learning to be able to do this. And I want to encourage you because there were years where we grew terrible crops or we grew the wrong variety that wouldn't store well. But just a little bit of research, a little bit of due diligence on your part, and you can really reap the benefits of your summer garden. The garden that you're planting right now, you could be eating from next winter and next spring still. <laughs>